that help? Good morning, everyone. It's uh, just a minute or so after 11 o'clock, and I would like to call the Capital Commission to order. Uh, and ask the Secretary to please call the roll. Here. Vice Chair Trescott. Here. Ms. Bauer. Ms. Tarkov. Your audio is off. Mr. Candler. I'm here. Ms. O'Brien. Here. 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 A quorum of the commission is present. As it is pretty obvious, we're having some technical issues. Uh, apparently, uh, we have exceeded uh, the limit of our Zoom. Getting word from Nielsen that we're getting ratings better at the nightly news. Uh, I'm because of these technical problems, I am going to put the commission at ease. Um, for 10 minutes and hopefully we can correct these technical problems. The commission will stand at ease at call the chair.
Well, once again, good morning, everyone. I'm sorry for the technical problems that uh, we have encountered. I, we have had two commission members join us uh, by phone, so I'm going to ask the secretary to again call the roll. Chair Rachel? Here. Vice Chair Traska? Here. Ms. Bauer? Here. Ms. Tarkoff? Here. Mr. Candler? Bill? Mr. Candler? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Ms. O'Brien? Here. A form commission is present. Um, first item on the agenda is establishing meeting dates for future meetings. We have Monday, June 8th and Monday, July 13th. Bill, you have requested that we move the June 8th meeting one week. Is that correct? That's correct. We're good, yeah. I, I, I know that and you may have asked that they will do this. Okay. Um, how do commission members feel about moving to the following Monday? Not a problem. Fine. Works for me. Okay. Here, no objection. We will move that the following Monday. Um, the consent agenda. Have members had an opportunity to review the consent and the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. If there's no additions or corrections, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So we, we have motion by Commissioner Truscott and supported by Secretary O'Brien. If there is no objection, we'll attach a unanimous roll call to the adoption of the consent agenda. Next on the agenda is um, the issue that I think has made us so popular today, uh, a discussion on firearms in the Capitol and on the Capitol Square. <clears throat> If I might, to sort of set the stage, I would ask members to indulge me for a moment as we sort of take a trip down memory lane. In 2013, uh, three of us, myself, Tim Boland, who at the time was the business director for the House of Representatives, and uh, the Secretary of the Senate at that time, Carol Venti, we were very concerned about what appeared to be some neglect to the upkeep of the Capitol in Capitol Square. So in consultation with Carrie Chartkoff, who at the time was the Capitol historian, we set about to look at a mechanism that would let us deal with those pressing issues. Um, we worked with the Service Bureau and developed the concept of the Capitol Commission. We then took that concept to several members of the legislature who had expressed support for what we were doing. And subsequent to that, four bills were introduced that ultimately, ultimately created the Capitol Commission. Now, <clears throat> it was the intent of the legislature at that time and the intent of those of us who sort of came up with the idea that the Capitol Commission would have exclusive control over the grounds and the upkeep and care of the Capitol building itself. Uh, we have over the last six years accepted that challenge and I think done some really good things for the Capitol and Capitol Square. We are redeveloping as far as the grounds is concerned, the West Lawn to the Capitol, which will greatly enhance the beautification of Capitol Square. We have taken steps to improve the energy efficiency by 
creating the geothermal field. That is completed. We have 244 deep wells that will greatly reduce over time the cost to the taxpayers of the state of Michigan and has made us very energy efficient. We are now in the midst of construction of Heritage Hall, which will relieve a lot of stress that is being placed on the camp. We have over 200,000 school children who visit their capital every year. We want it to be a warm and inviting and educational visit. I have to tell you, not in our wildest dreams did we ever think that the Capitol Commission would be looking at a situation like we're looking at today where we're being asked to interpret law, to kind of take some of the responsibility that historically has been the responsibility of the legislature and develop a plan for control of firearms. I don't by any means mean to demean the tremendous amount of interest that we've received from individuals across the state and from legislators, that this is a serious matter. We take it seriously. We have received hundreds of emails and phone calls over the last few days, expressing both feelings for limiting and some other adamant feelings that, hey, the law is pretty clear as it exists. In fact, some of them have quoted from a posting that's on the Michigan State Police website that says, in Michigan, it's legal for a person to carry a firearm in public as long as the person is carrying the firearm with lawful intent and the firearm is not concealed. You will not find a law that states it is legal to openly get to not carry an open firearm. It is legal because there's no Michigan law that prohibits it. However, Michigan law limits the premises on which a person may carry a firearm. So that has kind of been <clears throat> the premise that we have operated on in the position kind of that we have taken. Enter a letter from the attorney general last Thursday indicating that she thought that we had greater authority and that we could control firearms. That letter was upgraded at nine o'clock uh, this morning, at least that's when I received the official opinion from the AG, saying that clearly you do have the authority to limit firearms on the Capitol Square. Uh, I would also like to tell you that we have received several letters from uh, legislators uh, and those letters will be included in the minutes of this meeting. And just a short time ago, we received a letter from Mike Shirky, Senate Majority Leader. And I'd like to read a portion of that letter into the record. I write to request the commission delay a formal decision at the May 11th meeting and instead commit, commit to meeting with legislative leaders, Senate and House sergeants and Michigan State Police to discuss the best policy going forward. The choice to allow or disallow open carry of firearms brings with it the need for a thorough review of how the policy will be implemented and communicated to the public. So with that kind of as a backdrop, I would like to open the issue up for discussion and recognize Commissioner O'Brien. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion and to move to form a committee to study the issue, seek input from the legislature and executive and report back a recommendation to the full commission and to name to this committee, the commission chair, vice chair, secretary of the Senate and commissioner Bill Candler. Representative O'Brien makes the motion that we create a special committee. Is there support for her motion? 
Yes. Commissioner Truscott supports the motion. Discussion on the motion. The question for us is the creation of a special committee. Yes. Bill, can you guys hear me? Yes, Bill. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple, a couple of questions. First of all, isn't that four members in that committee? Yes, uh, she did name four. Uh, that is uh, actually a quorum of the full commission. Uh, there was, I think, some thought about maybe three, but we would still be subject to the Open Meetings Act either way. So it was felt it would bring more input if we included four members of the commission. And of course, we will comply with the Open Meetings Act with any meeting scheduled by this select committee. And my second, oh, yeah, go ahead, Bill. The audio for a second, for a second. You still there? Yes. Okay. And my second uh, question: I, I would, I would like to postpone the motion for. I'd like to first before we decide to go to a committee, which I think is probably what we're going to have to do. I'd like to hear a report from our legal counsel and a little discussion about that recommendation before we go to the motion to how we proceed. Does that make sense? I'd like to hear the you know, report from our legal counsel. Would you agree that if we allow some latitude, we keep the O'Brien motion on the table, but allow latitude under discussion and call in Amy Shaw to uh, share with us uh, the research that she has done? Would you be comfortable with that? Yes, I would. Okay, let's proceed in that manner. Uh, any member of the commission, before we ask Amy for her opinion, any member of the commission like to offer additional comments at this time? Yes, Commissioner O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I spent a lot of time this weekend thinking about the issue. And in my 10 years at the Capitol, I've been a part or a witness of many a protest. My concern is that if we were to make a decision today, it may not be the most deliberate and thorough discussion. Furthermore, having just received less than about two hours ago, an opinion from the attorney general, I have not been allowed to have a full discussion with our attorney about this. So for me to make a final decision today, would not be doing the duty of which I'm obligated to do. And so the motion is not intended to sidestep the issue, but rather to do it in a thorough manner to maybe even address some of the issues we had at the 2012 protest, which in fact was much larger than the protest of last month. I think there's a wide array of issues that if we're gonna seek legal opinion or possibly even laws being proposed or passed, we need to make sure we're encompassing everything that's happened here and not reacting to a single incident. So that was the reason for my motion. Thank you, uh, John Prescott. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and first, I, I want to say that, you know, I appreciate all the letters that we've been getting. Um, I appreciate the fact that they have been very civil in tone on a very um, emotional issue. Um, my comments relate to, and Amy may or may not choose to address them, but as it relates to the motion, uh, some things that I would like considered, and maybe Amy can help us with that now. If not, it may take more research. But uh, we took an oath to uphold the, the state laws and the Constitution when we joined this commission. And I take that very seriously. So as Margaret said, this issue has been around with us for about two weeks, and I'm not comfortable rushing into something without a full vetting legally and otherwise. A couple of things that I, I would like to be considered, um, and we didn't have a chance to really have the time to thoroughly review the Attorney General's opinion, but one thing that stuck out of me that she said is that we have the obligation to care for and protect the safety of those working in and visiting the Capitol grounds and facilities. Now, I, I agree that common sense dictates that that's the case. However, putting it in an opinion or considering it in state law, confers liability to us that is not in state law. So that, that is the type of thing that I want to see uh, put out there. And then also, I hope that as part of this committee, we can review how other states have done this. My cursory view has been it's either been done by state law, by administrative rule, or by executive order. And it's my belief that that's the appropriate place for it. And then the third, I want to go back and review an opinion from a previous attorney general 
just says the commissions have no authority to change or bridge state law. And it's my understanding that's sitting before the Supreme Court right now. So for us to act on something that is going to be decided at the highest court uh, in Michigan, it might be prudent to wait until after that. So uh, Amy may or may not choose to address any of those, but I, I hope that that would be included in the committee due diligence. Any other commissioner? Yes. I guess I missed understood. I thought we were going to wait to discuss this until after. I'm sorry, John, so I apologize. Um, Amy Shaw, are you there? Amy? I am, I am sorry. Okay. Um, have you followed the questioning here and the conversation? Okay. Were you wanting me to provide my analysis at this time? Or yes, or yes, okay. yes. I sure will. First, let me start by saying that this is not a personal opinion about firearm reg regulation at the Capitol. I appreciate the feeling of fear and intimidation that the lawmakers are expressing. It's very disturbing. I agree, as the Attorney General said, that the freedom of civil discourse does not imply the right to threaten others with harm or violence. And I hope that they reach the objective they seek in the appropriate way. Also, I'd like to make abundantly clear that firearms can be regulated. The narrative out in the press suggesting that the Capitol Commission is indicating or advising that firearms cannot be regulated is absolutely absurd. This false narrative is concerning and dangerous as it harnesses deep and valid feelings on a larger, very important issue and rests them on a commission that is not involved in this debate. It distracts from and dilutes the importance of the objective of those that seek and deserve a real resolution to this situation. But we're not here to discuss the larger issue of regulating firearms at the Capitol. It's incredibly important and should be given the appropriate focus. We're here to discuss the Capitol Commission's authority to change state law and affect constitutional rights. You've asked whether the Michigan State Capitol Commission has the requisite authority to regulate firearms within the Capitol and specifically within the elevated gallery position inside each chamber. The Michigan Capitol Commission is in charge of restoration woodwork, historic paintings, vintage chandeliers, polishing marble floors, planting flowers, and docent tours. The Capitol Commission does not set public policy. The legislature does. Article 4, Section 1 of the Michigan Constitution states, the legislative power of the state of Michigan is vested in the Senate and House of Representatives. It is indeed the legislature that has the authority and is the appropriate body to change state law to regulate firearms at the Capitol generally, and particularly as it relates to the elevated public galleries in each chamber. The Michigan Court of Appeals has held that the constitutional guaranteed right to bear arms is not absolute, but may yield to a legislative enactment that represents a reasonable regulation by the state in the exercise of its police power to protect the health safety and welfare of Michigan citizens. The Michigan State Capitol Historic Site Act created the Michigan Capitol Commission. The act confers upon the Michigan Capitol Commission the duty to maintain the historic site. When reading the act in its entirety, it's apparent the legislative intent was for the commission to maintain the building, the grounds, the statutes, the artwork for all Michiganders. A look at MCL 4.1 Nine or three lists in specificity the special features of the building and grounds, noting the history, the cost, the construction, and the awards bestowed upon the restoration. It's evident that the Michigan State Capital Historic Site Act and the creation of the Michigan Capital Commission were intended to maintain and preserve the structure and history associated with the special site. The commission is the custodian. Nowhere does it confer upon the commission the police or public policy making powers 
of the state. The act does grant exclusive control of the historic site to the commission for the above mentioned responsibility, with the exception of the Senate and House spaces, which are reserved to the respective chambers. Article 4, Section 16 of the Michigan Constitution affords each house the right to establish their own rules and procedures. The elevated galleries within the Capitol are under the control of each chamber, not the Capitol Commission. The Commission's control of the public spaces in furtherance of the maintenance and as a custodian of the building is restricted by Constitution and the laws of the state of Michigan. Although the Commission has the authority to adopt procedures and rules for the use of the public areas in the Capitol, they relate to the maintenance and preservation of the building. A public policy decision of this magnitude rests with the lawmaking body of the state, the legislature. It's unlawful to carry a gun in the White House, on the grounds of the White House, or in a federal building. This is established by federal law, not by a commission. Of the noted states regulating firearms in their capital, contained in the House Democratic Caucus's letter urging the Commission to act, one thing is consistent. They were enacted in statute. None of the regulations were initiated by a commission of unelected officials charged with the upkeep of the Capitol building, nor should they be. The cases mentioned regarding the school regulations are distinguishable. The court cited the narrow issue of whether the school districts in Ann Arbor and Clio were local units of government and thus banned from regulating firearms under MCL 123.1102. This case purposefully did not decide whether there was a conflict preemption or a constitutional infringement. Further, a review of the revised school code, Act 451 of 1976, Section 380.11a, grants the school district general powers, including providing for the safety and welfare of pupils while at school or a school-sponsored activity or while in route to or from school or a school-sponsored activity. The school districts and their enabling statute are expressly charged with the safety and welfare of students on their property. There is no such comparable directive in Act 240 of 2013. The commission is charged with the maintenance of the historic site. This would be the equivalent of the custodian of the school district establishing firearm regulation. This situation in regarding a school, not the Capitol building. The Capitol isn't just a public building, it is the public building. The only place where members of the public can properly take part in their government. The burden of a ban at a school can be more easily mitigated as a person can choose not to visit the school. This is not the case for the Capitol. It's the only place where the seat of government exists. The appropriate, to appropriately overcome that heightened burden, the regulation should be properly based in law, not a number in the procedures for the use of the public areas of the Michigan State Capitol pamphlet. Legislative action is necessary to change state law and properly regulate the open carry of firearms at the Capitol. The legislature is the elected body with the clear responsibility of establishing public policy in the state. Moreover, each legislative chamber controls their own gallery. Rules adopted by the Commission under their Act 240 authority for carrying firearms in the public spaces within the Capitol would be in conflict with Article 1, Section 6, Article 4, Section 1, and Article 4, Section 16 of the Michigan Constitution, as well as current state law. To ask our first responders, the state police, the House sergeants, and the Senate police to enforce a commission procedure that conflicts with the Constitution and current state law would be untenable. I totally understand the passion behind those urging the commission to go beyond their authority to act in the hope that the Hail Mary pass quickly accomplishes their goals. The debate on this topic is at a fever pitch. People are uncomfortable and feel intimidated and they deserve to be heard. I got an email from a very well-educated civil rights attorney this weekend who had read the splashy headlines and erroneously believed 
that I was poised to advise the Capitol Commission that firearms cannot be regulated at the Capitol. That's the false narrative that's out there. Think about that. You're being thrust in the crosshairs, and undue intimidation is being forced upon you based upon the erroneous information that keeps getting repeated. Firearms can be regulated. However, I would ask you this. Take out the hotly contested and extremely sensitive topic of gun and consider your answer under a different scenario. Would you be comfortable if this commission, under their Act 240 authority, could issue a rule in the procedures for the use of the public areas of the Michigan State Capitol pamphlet, which took away your voting rights? What about your civil rights? I bet you would not read Act 240 to give the commission this authority. That is exactly what this type of action, if taken, would indicate is possible. This extremely sensitive issue should be left to the legislative determination. A hasty and unlawful decision on this important topic would be unwise. This justifies further in-depth review. I would recommend that the commission seek outside counsel and input and give this very impactful decision the utmost care and consideration. Okay, thank you, Amy. Um, and for the record, Amy Shaw is the legal consultant for the Capital Commission. Uh, Bill, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, I guess, first of all, I, I, I'm sorry, I just to say that I'm really disappointed in what I just heard. That was not a, a legal advice, that was, that was a speech. And uh, how, how you feel and what you think, that's I'm disappointed. So I, I, I'm taking this very seriously, and I wish we all would. And that just was not a serious legal review. I'm sorry. I know it, he was capable of that, very capable. I don't know why we got political uh, commentary included in that. That, that is disappointing, because I think we all want to take this seriously. We, we, two or three weeks ago, none of us in the commission would ever even thought of the fact that we were dealing with this. We never, we didn't think we didn't have the authority. We didn't think we did have the authority. We never assumed anything would of that kind would be within our scope. We hadn't thought about it. And then, uh, out of the blue, uh, about four days ago, we got an AP opinion saying, we do. Uh, and uh, I was, at first, when we first mentioned the idea about the statement, I thought, we don't have the authority. Now that I've read this, I spent the entire weekend reading the opinion, reading the court cases around it. I'm thinking, well, maybe we do. Again, I'm not 100% convinced, but I'm thinking maybe we do. And I still like to probe into this quite, quite a bit more to try to figure out what's next. Situation as far as our status, um, and that's why I was hoping for you know some serious legal um, guidance from the other side, from the perspective of saying you probably don't, so, so we could look at both and try to figure it out. Um, I don't, I don't know if anything been submitted by Amy in, in writing, uh, and maybe it didn't have all the political commentary in it, but I, I haven't seen that yet. I think we really need to look at that. Uh, we need to discuss. Just, uh, the AG has been with the AG, and uh, I'm hearing uh, from all kinds of people that supposedly we're going to get formal AG opinion, not, not just the letter we have. That would, of course, be more significant. Um, and I'd like to delve in a little bit more about the, the, the issues uh, regarding the Ann Arbor School District uh, case. Uh, I agree with, with Amy when I first read this. I thought, well, this has to do with just the issue of whether or not. Uh, they are a local unit of government as defined in that act. And obviously, the act, in the court of the act, they're not. However, Amy, I think you might agree with this. Much more of the discussion is actually, as I read this, and I'm not an attorney, so I'm just kind of like pulling this stuff out, trying to understand this. It's really much more about the issue about trying to measure whether or not uh, an action by the Ann Arbor School District would be a, a, uh, a direct uh, uh, preemption of legislative authority or a, a field preemption. And basically, what they came to the agreement, the, uh, the point of it, they, they said the legislature is not exempting the entire field of gun regulation. So it's possible for other entities other than the legislature to regulate. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean we have the authority, but it's, it's making the point that others than the legislature do. I think we need to look into that more carefully to discuss that. But even maybe a more relevant situation may be the uh, court. Uh, Michigan law 
says that you cannot carry a gun into the court. But about three lines below that in the statute, there's exceptions unless you have a uh, concealed weapon permit. So according to the law, you can take a concealed weapon into the court. However, nonetheless, the court has issued a uh, administrative directive saying nobody can take a weapon, any weapon, into the uh, courthouse and they can force that. If you have a gun with you, you cannot go in. You gotta leave the gun there or else you're turned away. Again, the law says concealed weapon permit person can go in there. So I, I try to understand that. I talk to people, including judges, and their 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 answer was that. But it, what it means is that if if you go try to go into a courthouse with a concealed weapon uh, on you, it, it's not a crime. Um, but that doesn't mean the court can't turn you away. It's like if somebody might be able to turn you into a private property. If they said they had a, a uh, rule there saying you can't bring a gun, uh, they could stop you from bringing a gun. So uh, we need to look at that. That may be more closely. Line the situation we're in. We're not talking about making it illegal as a later uh, violation. I think we're just saying if you have, or we're <coughs> talking about, if you have a weapon, can you, can you or can you not enter? But anyway, I think we should look at that. But then that brings us to the situation if we say there are, we want to have a policy saying somehow regulate weapons, guns, something coming into the building, what, what does that mean? We say no guns, for example. Does that mean state police can't come in with a gun? That means uh, security detail of a visiting uh, dignitary coming in with their security can't bring a gun in. They're only guns, they're only concealed weapons, they're only open carry. There's a lot of questions here. So I, I agree we need to review this um, seriously based upon the law. <laughs> but, but I'm concerned about our starting this because our, our first comments from our legal counsel include a lot of political commentary. That doesn't help us. This, this body should not be dealing with this as a political issue. This is, we should be looking at it whether or not, you know, from a legal point of perspective, whether or not we have responsibility and authority, I'm sorry, the authority to do this. And I think if we have the authority to act, we have the duty to act. But hopefully, uh, as a committee, we, we, we can work this through as this mission always has, as a purely you know, objective review of what the, the law is, and then uh, take our actions from that uh, from, from there. Anyway, that's, that's, I'll get off my, my phone now, but that's my, my thought. Okay, thank you, Bill. And I appreciate your comments. Um, I, I appreciate your, your reference to the fact that this commission, since its creation in 2014, has uh, worked in a nonpartisan, non-political fashion. Um, I do take a slight bit of issue. I think Amy's summation was not intended to be political. Um, I'm sorry if it's interpreted that way. Uh, John Truscott. Yeah. Wait. Um, and Chair, I, I, I would also like to make a comment at some point. Sure. Joan, Joan Bauer, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now, are we, at this point, Chairman Randall, are we commenting in general? Are we commenting on the motion? What are we? <clears throat> well, from a strict parliamentary point of view, we should be speaking only to the merit of whether we create the special committee or not. That's what the vote will be. But I was asked to extend some latitude so that members of the commission could go a little beyond whether or not we should have the special committee. Uh, so. Okay. I, have, I have some general comments, but I also have comments on uh, please go ahead and express okay. both. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, you know, I was interested in serving on the Capitol Commission because I care deeply about the building and what it represents. And when I served in the legislature every day, when I walked from my office to the Capitol, I pinch myself as I approach this grand building because I had the privilege of representing my constituents and the responsibility making the best decisions I could for the people of my district and state. I'm also a former history and government teacher who loved this grand old building for its historical significance to the citizens of our state. And I think that all of us on this commission, in fact, I know we do, that's what we thought we were signing up for to be on the commission. We have a strong commitment to maintain, preserve, and restore the capital and capital square for the people of Michigan. And we realized I hope and think we realize that it's also our responsibility to ensure
sure that this building is a safe place for the people who work here and for the hundreds of thousands of people who visit the Capitol each year, including over 200,000 school children, many of whom come in the springtime. And I just can't forget on the record, I am deeply concerned for the safety of our legislators, the staff who work in the Capitol, and the thousands of people who come in and out of the building. As they tour, they visit, they advocate, and they even cater the events that are held. Three of us on this commission used to work in the Capitol building, so we can somewhat imagine what it would feel like to be in the House and Senate chambers with people in the gallery carrying guns, looking down on us as we debated and voted on highly emotional bills. Two of our commissioners still work in those chambers, so you have firsthand experience with the Capitol building overflowing with people with guns. No one should have to come to work and be intimidated and worried, and even for their lives. And we need, need to make sure that our legislators can make the best decisions for us, the people of Michigan, without the fear of reprisal. I, like all of you, have received hundreds of emails in the past, past few days. I feel like I'm back in the House of Representatives from people on both sides of the uh, issue. And I thank them for sharing their thoughts, opinions, and concerns. I've also talked to many people over the past 10 days who had no idea I was on the Capitol Commission, but they know I've been a state representative. They've been all ages, economic background, races, Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives. And the response has been completely, they all had no idea guns were allowed in the Capitol. And they couldn't believe I'm saying nothing has been done. I agree. One thing I agree with Amy, with her statement, that um, it's an extremely sensitive issue and it, it, the legislature should handle it. I agree. They can easily deal with it by putting parameters on guns in the Capitol building. I wish they would. But they haven't. And it is, in my opinion, now the Capitol Commission's responsibility to protect the public safety of the people who are in the building. We now have the Internal Attorney General of Michigan, our top law enforcement officer in the state, issuing an opinion that the commission is vested with the legal authority to ensure the safety of the visiting public as well as those who carry out the people's work by prohibiting firearms within the Capitol building. We have the legal authority, I believe, and I would argue that we also have the moral responsibility. Accordingly, I think we should take action. I would be ready to take action today, and I know that it doesn't sound like my colleagues are. I have a motion uh, that I could present. But if we go ahead with this committee, I have, number one, I think it's interesting there are four people on it. I would like to be on it also. Uh, I, we're all ready. If, if there's four people, maybe we need to meet as a committee as a whole with and, and carry on the business. It's a very important issue, obviously. Uh, secondly, I think time is of the essence. I have seen the I have seen committees of the legislature very quickly do many things when they were timely. So I would like to see us put a timeline on the work of this committee. I'd like to see us say that we need to reconvene in 48 hours for the discussion. So those are my comments. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bauer. Uh, John Prescott. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and Joan and Bill, I, I agree with you. I don't like seeing weapons in the building either. Um, but I think we have to be very careful that, that we're not overstepping our bounds because then if we make a decision, this is a, a question that I have for the lawyers uh, through this committee, are we at risk of crossing some line and, and having some penalty for making a decision. Uh, do we have civil liability at that point if we make a decision that's outside our bounds? I personally don't believe that as unelectable, unaccountable individuals that are basically here as museum caretakers and gardeners for the building, that we have the ability to overturn state law. There are appropriate bodies to do that, and I would encourage and support their action to do so it's not our responsibility. So that, that's what I fear is that we're overstepping our bounds. I've talked to numerous lawyers uh, and even a judge friend of mine 
of all political stripes over the weekend, and they all agreed that we would have an injunction filed almost immediately if we took this action because it's beyond our bounds. But I think more importantly, we are probably one of the least political commissions or bodies around the Capitol. But yet we've been thrust into a very difficult political issue that has statewide importance and significance. And I don't think we can look past that. We were not appointed to get involved in politics or to make political decisions, but that's where we find ourselves. So I think studying this, uh, getting the appropriate outside legal counsel so that we know what the bounds really are rather than relying on people with political motivations to say one thing or the other, uh, I would like independent review of this so we make sure we're making the right decision. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Truscott. Uh, Carrie Charkoff. Thank you. Um, Carrie, you're I on think, mute, Carrie. Carrie, I oh. think your, your mute is on. Ah, all right. Doesn't say it is. I will see. Yep. It, Carrie, we are not able to hear you. Uh, is your mute on? No. There, we got that. <laughs> I echo. Um, I worked in the Capitol, as you all know, for about 30 years. And for more than 20 of those, I directed the Capitol Tour Guide Service, as well as serving as the building historian. And I have watched the events from the standpoint of understanding what it is like to work in the building and to have in your care children who are touring the building with you. It's a very crowded building. It's small and it's heavily visited. If we have one of the highest visitation rates of any capital and we do it in one of the smallest. So this creates all kinds of safety issues. A lot of uh, discussion about why we keep signs out of the building. It has nothing to do with what's on the sign. It has to do, and by the way, all signs are not banned from the building. Signs on sticks are banned. And the simple reason is that when someone comes into a highly crowded building with a lot of intemperate uh, issues going on, uh, these are, there's no place for them. People turn around and whack the person behind them or they whack the walls. So we just said no sticks in the Capitol. But we go to great trouble to protect people's right to have to speak. We used to collect all those sticks as they came in and write the person's name on it so that when they went out to the front yard of the Capitol, they had their stick back and their sign. My concern about the recent issues has been the fact that people are carrying open carrying into the Capitol building, which never happened when I work. I'm retired and I no longer direct the tour guide service or serve as the building historian. But I know what it's like to have such a thing going on in such a crowded building. The Capitol Commission indeed does have authority over the public areas of the Capitol, not over the chambers, not over the offices occupied by the House and Center, not over the governor's offices but over the public areas, and that's the rotunda, the corridors, that sort of thing. And I think we do have that authority in those areas. We have always passed procedures for the use of the building, and yes, we do have authority over those procedures for the use of the building. We're not just gardeners. We're not just antique carrier, carriers, and we're, we're, we have the, we have the well-being of the capital and the well-being of all those who come to the building under our command, or I should say control or authority. We are supposed to protect the right of the public to visit the building and also protect the security and well-being of those who work there. That's part of our mandate, as I understand it. So on the other hand, I do support. I, I, in other words, I, I obviously take this extremely seriously. I do not like what I have seen in the news of the threatening figures in the, in the two chambers. And I do think we need to do something, but we can't do it in haste. This has just suddenly popped out of nowhere for us in many ways. 
And I think we need to take a little time to review it, discuss it, and decide how we're going to approach it. That is so I thank you very much and turn the chair back to you, Gary. Thank you, Carrie. Um, wait, Chair, wait, Chairman Randall? Yes. This is Joan. I could not hear a thing Gary said. Well, it was difficult, and I'm not sure okay. what the technical problem is. Uh, oh, okay. I thought maybe it was just because I had to be no. in the phone. Okay, thank you. Chairman, this is Bill Cameron. I think we need to reset and fix these, fix, fix these technical issues. I, this is crazy. Uh, I, I think your point is valid, but uh, let's consult with our technician. Is there a fix, Alan? Um, unfortunately, we've exceeded the license count on our Zoom licenses. The only way I could get the rest of the commissioners in is we would have to have some attendance drop out. Did you hear that response, Bill? I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I heard it too. And I, I, I sense the frustration in your voice and I agree. Um, I'm a little perplexed that, um, that we weren't better prepared for this. We, uh, we knew we were going to have a lot of people in attendance. I guess we did not anticipate it exceeding our limit. Um, I can assure you that this won't happen again. And, and to, your, to your point, Joan, if, if I might, uh, I'd like to go back to the fact that this commission in dealing with the issues that we have dealt with since the inception of the commission has attempted to be as nonpartisan as we can. We have been thrown into an issue that by its very nature, has partisan implications. But I pledge to you as chair, I will continue to fight vigorously to make sure that we keep it as pristine as we can, realizing that the issue is always going to have a political undertone. Having said that, um, I'm going to I'm going to ask uh, the maker of the motion if she would agree to add you add you to the to the list that's fine mr chair i just wanted to offer to commissioner bauer and commissioner candler just a real brief summary of what commissioner charkoff has said she basically agreed with a lot of the concerns that various people have raised and the thought that the capital commission should do something but not act in haste so while she didn't state whether she directly opposes or supports a committee she did talk about taking time to deliberate. And I just wanted to offer that to the two commissioners who are having difficulty hearing. Thank you. Uh, so you will be added in that motion. Uh, we, can, we can amend your motion or, or you can resubmit it to include her name. We can do amendment. Okay. Uh, Representative Bauer offers to amend the motion to include her um, on the special committee. Is there support for that? We did it. Commissioner Truscott supports. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The motion is amended to include you, Commissioner Bauer, to the special committee. Thank, thank you, you Chairman bet. Randall. You bet. Um, is there any other discussion on the motion before us that is to create a special committee to investigate all aspects and get back to the commission in a timely manner? Now, I realize that's kind of vague, but because we don't know what we'll run into as we seek outside counsel, it's difficult to put a time frame on it. So I'm going to charge that committee with the responsibility to get back to us in a timely manner. Is that acceptable? Okay, this is uh, Chairman. Yes. Um, I think based on everything that is happening, I think timely 
vague, a bit vague. Um, I would, I would offer a First Amendment that is that we that that the that the committee get back to us in um, with some initial work in 48 hours. Uh, you're offering that it's an amendment to the O'Brien yes. motion. Yes. Yes. Is there support for that amendment? Hearing none, the motion fails for lack of support. If there's no further discussion, yes. I, yeah, I, I, I thought you were speaking on this, but. If we're going to take it seriously, but I need to think seriously about how we're going to work through this correctly. Yes. In my okay, so the bigger the committee, the harder it is to get it done. I think force the man. Um, the idea is, is for a few people to sit down and go through the legal uh, discussion and come back with with an understanding, bring it to full commission. The bigger the group, the longer it's going to take to schedule, get everybody together. Um, I'm just really concerned about even, even being poor. And, and I know that means people get, get get excluded. If I get cut out, that's I guess so be it. But I mean, I think we need to do this in a way that's really you know, efficient and effective uh, and be serious about this. We need to, we need to be able to act. We, we can't that we can't add to the committee and then get asked ask that we act quickly. And I'd like to see it be a group of three and we're going to have to meet with and discuss with uh, the attorney general, the state police, and several other people to point the law and come to conclusion as to our ability to act and then come back. To the commission for their answer. I mean, everybody in the commission is going to be able to see and discuss what, what this group does. The more, more cumbersome it is, the harder it's going to be to coordinate everybody's schedule. We know that. So, anyway, my point is I think we ought to consider going back to three people and creating a committee that size uh, rather than being four. That, that's my discussion point. Uh, would you like to offer an amendment to the O'Brien motion? to reduce the number to three? I wouldn't, I would so move. Okay. okay, is is there support for that amendment? I, I support that amendment, which sounds strange, but I, I support it. Okay, uh, because the original motion uh, names individuals, if we're going to reduce it to three, um, what three are you suggesting? Or, or do you want to leave it up to the chair to appoint the three members? Well, and that's also very obvious. I'd like to be part of it, but I understand I'm, I'm the one who's limiting. <laughs> but I, well, I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, if you amend it the way that you leave it up to the chairman, I'll tell you who the three that I would pick. I would pick the maker of the original motion, <clears throat> Commissioner O'Brien. I would pick Bill Candler and John John Truska, and cutting myself out. So if you're comfortable with that, um, I'm comfortable with that. I I have absolute confidence in the three people that would be them on that special committee. I'd be comfortable with that. Uh, any comments from other commissioners? I, I, yes, Joan. I, I guess I would I would draw my second from that, but um, for Bill. Brian Cantor Truscott is the amendment, correct? Yes. And you withdraw your second. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're, we're back to the original motion. Uh, Carrie well, Charkoff. Could you restate the original motion? Uh, Madam Secretary, do you have the original motion or would you like uh, Commissioner O'Brien to restate it? I would appreciate it, Commissioner O'Brien, would restate it. Okay. 
Margaret, would you read your motion? So the motion as it was amended just most recently, the motion is to form a committee to study the issue, seek input from the legislature and executive and report back a recommendation to the full commission and to name to the committee, the chair, the vice chair, the secretary of Senate and Bill Candler, the amendment that was passed previously also added commissioner Joan Bauer to the committee. Which pushes back to four. Um, so with the amendment that <clears throat> passed, it was five and the motion in front of us would reduce it to three to be appointed by the chair. So right now- That she um, withdrew her second amendment. So that's not for us. So we don't have that motion. So right now the existing motion has a committee of five. Committee of five, including Commissioner Bauer. And I would be happy to, um, just in, in the spirit of having conversation, I'm happy to second Mr. Candler's motion to keep conversation going back. I haven't decided yet how I intend to vote, but I, I like the way the, the conversation's going. Comments. Anybody have any idea what we're going to vote on here? <laughs> I would like to have the secretary repeat the motion as it will appear in the minutes. So Mr. Chair, just to be clear, um, is Bill Candler's motion still on the table? No, because the second for that was withdrawn. So, so we're back to the amendment as it was the amended motion yes so the current amended motion is moved to form a committee to study the issue seek, seek input from the legislature and executive and report back a recommendation to the full commission and to name to the committee the chair of the commission vice chair secretary of senate bill candler and joan bauer that is the motion as it is properly before the commission at this time is there any further discussion Yes, I, I, I would just say, and, and this is probably the, the deepest and most substantive conversation we've ever had on an issue around here. I think it, it signifies the, the weight that we all feel over this issue. It's a very serious issue. And to Joan's point on timing and Bill's point on timing, I, I think they would have all of our commitment that we're going to move this as quickly as possible, but we need to be respectful of other people's schedules as well. So for example, I want to make sure that we have independent attorneys that are giving us advice that we can rely on because again we have potential liability here that we have to be very careful of so we will move quickly but as quickly as everybody's schedules will allow thank you thank you if there's no further discussion the commission will proceed to vote i would ask the secretary to call the roll chair randall yes Vice Chair Krakow? Yes. Ms. Bauer? Yes. Ms. Turkoff? Yes. Was that a yes, Carrie? Yes. Yes, she votes yes. Mr. Candler? Yes. Ms. O'Brien? Yes. The motion carries. That takes care of that agenda item. I say that uh, meaning that there's lots of work yet to be done. Uh, for those on the commission uh, with the feeling that this might be an attempt to stonewall or drag it out, I give you my word as the chair of the commission. We'll be meeting next week if we can arrange our schedules and we will set out an aggressive schedule to deal with the issue. Yes, Bill, did you have a comment? I think you just answered one or two of that's going to convene and you are, that's, that's great, perfect. Okay. Uh, let's move now on to the next item on the agenda. 